Ciao YouTube and welcome to Ask a Maestro. My name is William C. White and today I am dressed in my closest approximation of a Milanese chic kind of suit, kind of a Jeep Gambardello outfit. To answer the question, why are so many musical terms in Italian? Perché sono tutti i termini musicali in italiano? There will be plenty more poorly pronounced and delivered Italian in this episode. As musicians, we learn Italian at a very early stage in our development, and I think that we just don't even bother asking a lot of the time, why is so much in Italian? But it's not just classical musicians who use these common Italian musical terms. They really have pervaded the parlance of our time, even in English. Take, for example, opera, aria, a cappella, fantasia, piano, orchestra, soprano, tempo, crescendo, da capo, solo, vibrato, prima donna, diva, bravo, and of course, maestro. So how did we get to this situation where Italian is so pervasive in classical musical culture? Well, it really goes back to the Renaissance, which of course began primarily in Italy, in Venice and Florence and Naples. And it was a period in which the artists of that time were looking back at the classical age of ancient Rome and ancient Greece. And they were trying to reconstruct what they considered to be the artistic legacy of those eras. And this was no exception in music and in drama. The composers of the late 16th century, so the 1580s and 1590s, including, by the way, Vincenzo Galilei, the father of Galileo Galilei, the famous astronomer and inventor, they were looking back at ancient Greek theatrical forms. They knew that music had played a prominent role in those theatrical forms, but they didn't necessarily know what it sounded like or how it functioned. So they wanted to create a new art form that was a reflection of the legacy of what they believed to be ancient Greek tragedy. And so they more or less single-handedly invented opera. The first really important composer of Italian opera, a composer whose music we still perform and listen to today, was Claudio Monteverdi. And Monteverdi's music was very bold and took music in stark new directions. Now, when Monteverdi was writing music, Italian opera had not suffused the international scene yet. There was still a lot of competition from music by the Franco-Flemish composers, those composers from the Netherlands, uh, people like uh, Josquin and Orlando de Lassus. There were national composers in France and England and Spain as well. But Monteverdi's music was so striking in its drama that it soon became a, an international phenomenon. And composers came from many other regions to study with Monteverdi, including one of my favorites, Heinrich Schütz. Well, now is the time on Ask a Maestro when we listen to music. And today we're going to listen to music from a dramatic madrigal by Monteverdi. These were kind of small form, single scene operas. And this one's called Il Combattimento di Tancrede e Clorinda. And what you'll hear is wild use of the instruments, the, the strings, the violins and the cellos, sort of battering away at their instruments. This is nothing like the church music that was contemporary with Monteverdi. After Monteverdi, it became all the rage for the royal courts throughout Europe to have an Italian composer on their staff. Think about Lully in Paris, or later Cherubini in Paris, or Scarlatti, father and son, in Spain. Or even around the time of Mozart, there was Salieri 
in Vienna in the uh, Habsburg court. Majesty. Uh, did we vote in the end for German or Italian? Well, actually, sire, if you remember, we did finally incline to Italian. Uh, did we? Anyway, it's sort of amazing to think that this trend that started 400 years ago in the Renaissance affects how we contemporary musicians talk about and refer to music this very day. So if you are now studying music and maybe you're finding it, um, I don't know, tedious or difficult to memorize these Italian terms, just know that you're part of a very long tradition that goes back to some of the greatest musicians from the history of recorded music. Allora, YouTube, that's the end of today's episode of Ask a Maestro. So please leave your musical questions in the comments. Until next time, go play an instrument or sing a song. And until then, ciao a tutti. Can you sing it for Italian?